Welcome to Cut to the Chase, where we talk about compelling legal, regulatory, and public interest information and news. Your host is Greg Goldfarb, an attorney, entrepreneur, investor, and activist. All right, folks, it's time for our favorite podcast, Cut to the Chase. Uh, years ago, lawyers and law firms were not allowed to market. It was, you know, verboten, as the Yiddish would say, until the Supreme Court in Arizona said, let's go. And so now it's years later in law marketing. You have to be doing this if you're a lawyer or a law firm. So I brought on Travis Hecklin with Rise Up Media. They've been doing law marketing across the board, SEO, websites, pay-per-click, everything. So you're not getting somebody that's just Hyper focused on one thing and that's it and all that stuff. So, how are you doing today, Travis? I'm good, Greg. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. All right. So, and then thanks for coming on the show. All right. So, let's talk about your operation, Rise Up Media, what you all do, what separates you from there are a lot of lawyer uh, marketing firms out there. So, why, you know, this is really a show about why should uh, the audience talk to you? And the audience sure. the show is really for lawyers and law law firm. So if you're not and you're listening, I love you, but you know, this is where we're at right now. <laughs> yeah. So we, we've been, um, I've done mar uh, attorney marketing for over 15 years. We uh, hung up our own shingle about five years ago and we work with uh, about 400 law firms all across the U S um, all different practice areas, PI, criminal work comp, family, state planning, business, real estate, the whole deal. Um, and you know what separates us from the from the rest? I think is everybody. We have about forty five different employees, and um, a majority of them are, have kind of the same tenure as I do, where we've been working exclusively with lawyers for for ten, fifteen. Some of them have been doing this for twenty years. So we we really know this space. Uh, it's always uh, tempting to go outside of the the legal vertical, but you know we just stick with what we do best. I tell people we do we do five things. We make custom websites. Um, once those websites go live, we do SEO work, true SEO work, where we get them to show up on the first page of Google. Uh, we manage social media. Uh, we manage pay-per-click or PPC, uh, Google ad campaigns. Uh, and we also uh, manage the relatively new, a couple years old, I guess now, um, local service ads. Those are the pictures that show up on the, you know, when you type in Miami personal injury attorney, those, those faces that show up at the top, that's Google's new pay per call program. Yeah. Uh, and we, we do those and everything we do is on a month to month basis. Uh, we bet on ourselves a long time ago where we our, 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 our thought was if we're doing great work, um, people won't leave and knock on wood. Uh, that's that's turned out to be the case where we everything we do is month to month. All right. So we're going to first start off talking about what you don't do. Is there any type of law that you you just say, you know what, we can't market this, it doesn't work? criminal defense, family law, probate, anything like that? or No, no, we would, we, would, everything. we would handle it all. Yeah, there, we, we, we have clients that go, hey, just make us a fa fancy brochure online. We just want to make sure we're converting more of the uh, referrals that we're getting where we have no interest in, you know, growing a huge marketing campaign. And then we have folks that go, hey, I don't, ha I don't, I don't have any referrals. I want to scale this as big as I can. Uh, get me a ton of visibility throughout the country or throughout the state or wherever they're trying to practice. And we have those types of clients as well. All right. So I'm interested. I want to talk to you. I'm super busy. You know, I, I'm just, you know, completely chaotic going from one courtroom to the next and dealing with my employees and then I hire you. Um, is, are, are lawyers like that your common client? where they're just, they can't even focus. They don't, you know, they give you money and then they're like, okay, please perform miracles and I'm stepping out and you better perform. Yes. I So we're set up. To, so we, how we set up is for a firm that is exactly like you just explained, where they want to just focus on what they do best and practicing law. We earn their trust. Obviously, trust is earned and not given. Uh, that we're doing the right thing and 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 and, and pr providing a return on investment. What we would what we make happen before we bring on a let a client come on board is we just need to pin them down for forty five minutes, maybe an hour, and understand what they're trying to do. What is it? What is the goal? Right? Because you don't need to go spend a bunch of money if you're just trying to get one case in the door a month, or vice versa. What we see a lot is 
you know, because they went to some other marketing company that promised them, hey, if you spend $500, your phone's going to ring nonstop. We have to kind of reel them in and reset expectations, right? right? And so every client that we sit down, figure out, you know, we do an hour consultation to figure out what is it, what is it you want, where do you want it from, and how much of it do you want, right, is essentially the three questions we're trying to get answered. And then we do some analysis on their market and their in the comp competition and, and come back to them and go, hey, okay, for you to accomplish these goals, you know, this is what we recommend uh, that, that you do and figuring out, you know, what programs are best for them based on what their needs are. All right. So, I mean, I've been to enough legal conferences to see that one of the uh, things that lawyers and law firms that do do marketing are not doing properly is being able to, you know, oh, hey, I just paid for all this marketing and now the phone is ringing and, you know, we're not answering the phone. We're waiting an hour. We're calling back the next day. And then it's, yep. you know, they've all, oh. do you see that a lot? And what I'd like this, this part of the, our conversation to be in is what does your, what do you tell your clients? Hey, listen, before you spend any money with us, you better be prepared to answer the phone within minutes, calling them back, whatever it is. Like, what are the best practices for the law firm to maximize their return with you. Yeah, great, great point. And this is the number one thing that we run into. Um, it's not in our job description. <laughs> you know, we, we get the phone to ring and then what in an ideal world is we pass the baton to you and now you got to convert those. But that's not reality. So we have to roll up our sleeves and we have those conversations. A conversation that every one of our client clients or potential clients here is, tell me about your intake process. Yeah. Who answers the phone? Because mo most folks, most firms default into, I'm going to assign my lowest cost employee, right? The gal, guy or gal at the front desk to be the face of my firm, which is crazy to me, right? I tell people all the time, you'll spend, if you'll just answer the phone every time it rings, you'll spend half the money in marketing and twice the result. Because yeah. we see that the average firm believe it or not, answers the phone about 65% of the time. Like we we track every call from all 400 some odd firms that we work with. And that's that's about right. So best practices is, is make, if you're getting an email, let's talk about email forms. Um, if an email comes in, you need to answer that in within five minutes, right? Because we're in a fast food society, instant gratification world these days. And the average client that's coming off the internet doesn't know you from from Adam, so they're 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 just going down the line of what they see, or looking at reviews, doing all those different things. Make sure you need to make sure, like I think it's seventy three percent of people hire the first attorney they speak to. Yeah, amazing, right? And so be make sure you're answering the phone, and so you're able to convert those leads that you're paying probably a, a lot of money to get. So make sure you're answering emails within five minutes. Make sure you're answering the phone, getting their information, even if it's just getting their information and what the what the 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 case is about or matter and getting an attorney to to respond to that in a timely manner, right? To get stop the shopping process. Yeah. Um, another thing is make sure you you have chat or text option on your website, right? Because people just a lot of people don't understand how PI works, right? They don't, they don't know what the word contingency means, right? Yeah. You guys who have done this for forever in a day, forget what um, the lay person knows or doesn't know. And so they think it's like a, a taxi cab, right? They get in and the meter starts. So they would rather shoot a text or an email or a chat and get some questions answered and then, and then talk to an attorney. So, yeah. Make sure you have you'll come you'll increase your conversion. Uh, studies show upwards of 30 40 percent if you just have a text or chat feature on your website. All right, so one of the things that you do, you know, we'll segue right into the website, which is what you're saying to put the chat and text on, right? Correct. So, tell me, like, how many websites have you done for lawyers and law firms All over my time? Probably thousands. Yeah. Uh, we we currently work with about probably 300 plus law firm websites that we manage and, and have created to right now. So yeah, definitely having chat on there. Um, and just count, what you're doing is right. People, people are doing a Google search or even, even if they're just getting referrals, 
right? They, you know, they start off and they ask their friends and family who they should call and, you know, they get two or three names or what have you. Then they either get on their phone or they jump on a desktop and they do a Google search and they're, and they're judging right, wrong, or indifferent on who to call first based on their website. And so if you're able to have chat that pops out to them and it can meet them where they're at and get their information you're, that's going to fall in the bucket of the 73% of people who uh, hire the f- first attorney they talk to or law firm they talk to. All right. So I'm on my third lawyer website. And, <laughs> uh, you know, so I've never really drilled down into like really analyzing, you know, is it working? Is it not? I've always had them built out and then not had anybody really follow, you know, manage it afterwards. Um, a little bit. I'm doing it more and more now, you know, that I'm getting older. <laughs> I don't know if that's the explanation, but you know, that's, that's the reality. So when you do, when people call you up, Hey, I need a website, I need a new website. I'm a, you know, I'm just starting out as a, as a law, you know, breaking away from my law, the law firm that I work for, I'm doing this on my own now. Is it, you know, so the product that you're delivering is, is it is it the way is are you telling people like I I will do your website but we also will manage it or you can manage it on your own go ahead and figure it out like how does that work how yeah no Let, let's talk about somebody that can barely afford the website they just starting out and they don't want to get into a big long contract with SEO promises that they don't know if they can even really yep. handle all that work yeah no great point so I tell I tell folks there's three types of firms that come to us. Um, and this is really important. If if you're talking to an agency and they're not asking you these questions, or uh, then you're you're in the wrong place, right? And what I mean by that is, um, we have three types of firms that come to us. One that goes, "Hey, hey, Travis, um, I just hung a shingle, or my budget's only X. If I hand you a dollar, I need to see five bucks come back next month, yeah. right?" <laughs> When you're building out a website and doing SEO, let's say in Miami for PI, you need to spend a certain amount of budget because you need a certain amount of content and backlinks and all this geeky stuff that we do. That's not going to happen overnight. You, you you need to look at your SEO at six to 12 month glances to judge failure or success. Now, if I'm if, if the, the, the first group that comes to us and they go, hey, I need to see five bucks back tomorrow or next month if I'm going to do this, I'm not putting them in a website a long-term strategy where, where something like that comes into play is pay-per-click or local service. That's something that's going to give them instant gratification. Cause as a business owner myself, you know, if I'm in those shoes, I need, I need cash flow into the business. I can't afford to do X amount of thousands of dollars a month for 12 months. I'm going to sink my ship, right? Yeah. I'm not going to have, especially if you do PI, where even if I showed up on this phone call with five car accident cases over my shoulder and handed them to you, you're not seeing money on that for six to 12 months, best case scenario. Yeah. So I need to put you in a program that's going to give you instant gratification. So that's the first group that needs. So we may do a website that's just more of a fancy brochure online for now. Yeah. And then we're going to implement some type of ads that's going to get the phone ringing tomorrow. Yeah. And then we can come back and reinvest some money for a longer term strategy if they so choose. Yeah. There are other folks that come to us that maybe are a little longer in the tooth and say something along the lines of, hey, listen, we've been doing this for 30 years. We get a ton of referrals. I'm noticing the young whippersnappers down the road are getting some cases that we, quote unquote, should be getting. It's yeah. usually their words. <clears throat> I do want to invest in my website because I think that's where they're getting them. I don't need to see a return on my investment tomorrow. I certainly would like to see in the next six to 12 months, but I realize it takes some time. That is somebody who we're going to uh, build them a website, come up with an SEO and a content strategy to build out their website for a long term, right? Yeah. And then there's a majority of that that is a combination of the two, right? Where it's, hey, I do want to build out my website, but I do want to get cash flow in the business right away. So let's figure out what kind of budget it's going to take to incorporate both of those things. Um, and and th- those are the types of things that, you know, if you're talking to an agency, if you're, you know, your listeners are talking to an agency that don't exclusively focus on law and they don't realize that a PI firm is just because they get the phone to ring tomorrow doesn't mean that's cash flow into the business tomorrow. Um, that's where I would run, right? In, in working with an agency that understands law and how you got that a DUI firm 
functions in their cash flow is much, much different than a PI firm, yeah. right? Or so on and so forth. So those are those are important things um, that you certainly want to make sure is happening and make sure you <clears throat> make sure you're you're setting yourself up um in the right strategy, certainly, because the, the you know, you hear a lot out there. Oh, I tried SEO and it didn't work. Yeah. Well, what does that mean? Do you, you know, is there content? You know, when it comes to a website, if you're trying to show up in Miami for a car accident, you need a Miami car accident attorney page. If you're trying to show up in Orlando for car accidents, you need an Orlando car accident attorney page. That, that, that Miami page is not going to automatically show up in Orlando. In fact, it, it will never show up in Orlando. So a lot of these agencies just do, you know, write pages of content for the city in which your office is and never get outside of because, you know, a, a suburb of Miami, some city outside of Miami, you need pages of content if you want to show up there. Yeah. All right. So back to the website, I hire you to do my website. You do the website. It looks great. SEO. I'm not really sure what it is, you know, is, and this kind of goes back to what do I do after the website is built? You guys manage it if I have the money to pay you to manage it. But if I don't, I know you're trying to bring in some money and then build up from that. But what if that really doesn't, it, it doesn't either work or it's just not enough money to pay you to manage it? What, what do I do? I mean, can I manage my own? And what, what is it that needs managing? Why do I need my website, which is, looks beautiful, to be updated or what, what is the SEO part of it moving forward? That's so necessary. So there's two, there's two different strategies. One, one is having a website. That's a fancy brochure online. You're not trying to, you, you're not adding content and doing backlinks. And we'll get into that here in a second. You're not doing SEO work yeah. on that website. All that's there is for when people search your name or your law firm's name, they come to a good looking website and they can call you or email you or chat with you or whatever you want to do. This and, and that is just converting the referrals that are coming to you. Yeah. The next step, if you're trying to show up and you name the city for whatever practice area you're trying to show up for or type of case that you're trying to show up for, you need to do SEO work. You are no these ag there's agencies out there. If they're not adding content on a consistent basis on a monthly basis or and doing backlinks, getting links from other websites to point to your website. Not vice, not vice versa. Putting a link on your website to some legal directory to point people to go over there, that's not a backlink. Getting a link on a blog or legal directory or another law-related website to point back to you is called, is called a backlink. Those are the two things. There's a thousand things that go into SEO, but those are from a deliverable standpoint. Um, if you're not getting that on a consistent basis, that's not SEO work. Period. End of story. It's it's someone creating, you know, fluff to make and, and calling it SEO. You need what you need to do. Why you know, um, how you know somebody's doing something for you is if you're getting those deliverables on a daily basis. And I'm not talking about a 500 word blog post that doesn't do anything. I'm talking about actual practice area pages. Okay, so we're backlink. I'm like, what's a backlink? Do I, uh, I'm your client, what obligation do I have to get the backlinks, either get yeah. them or making sure they're, how does that all work? Yeah, back to your question of can, can you do it? I don't know what your SEO chops are. If you have that expertise, then yes, go do it. I tell people all the time, don't pay someone like us to do any of your marketing if you can and want to do it yourself. Yeah. Same thing as if I were to bring you a PI case. Can I do it myself and talk to the insurance company? I I suppose you probably would would argue that's that's not wise, yeah. right? Because I don't know. I don't have any. I'm not a PI personal injury attorney. Um, so it, it kind of goes lockstep with that. If they have the expertise to do so, great. Um, we don't. Once again. Our, our, the firms that we work with have no obligation to do anything. I just need them to, I tell them, I need you to answer the phone and close the deals and sign people up. Yeah. We'll handle all the rest. Now, if they want to get involved and understand and get under the hood and get in the weeds of what we're doing, we welcome that. I don't, I don't ex expect or would never do it myself, just blindly trust somebody. 
I want, I, I want a month. We would like a monthly consultation with all of our clients or at the very least a quarterly consultation where we sit down and go, here's what we've done, right? Yeah. Here's what we're doing. Here's what we're, we're doing for your hard earned money. Here's the deliverables we're, we're doing. And here's the results. Here's how many phone calls you get. Here's how many emails you've gotten. You can listen to the phone calls and let's match it up. Let's, let's not just, you know, what we hear a lot when we take over a client, I'm like, what's working? What is your agency doing for you? And nine times out of the 10, we get the answer. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. So uh, speaking of, I don't know, uh, SEO, I mean, I've been hearing SEO for SEO. How do I know if I'm doing SEO that it's working or not? I mean, the phone rings, maybe, you know, I got on some news channel and, you know, I'm a good looking guy and everybody's calling because they want to meet the good looking yeah. guy, you know, all that. Yes. So um, a couple of different things. Number one is you should see an increase in visitors over time to your website. That's how you know if your agency is doing a good job. Right. When we take over a website, let's say it's a brand new firm. <clears throat> no one, we're, we we want to see that maybe a, we get 100 visitors to their website the first month. Yeah. And then the fourth month, we see that there's 500 visitors. And then there's 1,000. And there's 5,000 and 10,000. You want to see an upward trajectory and consistent visitors. Now, if you ran, so some of our clients run radio ads or run TV ads or do something for a short period of time. And we may see a spike. Yeah. right over that period of time but then it levels off and we get the true listing and then we can also tell what people are typing in um in the google box to get there if we're running pay-per-click ads we can see where that traffic is coming from so we can see trends and we we're in communication with those firms so what to know what they're you know what what they're what other type of advertising they may be running and what's coming from google what's coming organically so on and so forth and you can see what um especially when phone calls come in, you can see we track whether it's they're typing in your name or law firm's name, or if they're typing in something like Miami personal injury attorney, because that would, that would sit a uh, signal that that is some, a stranger that's coming off of an organic search that they've been doing. All right. So Jack, this is sort of, I think an important question for the consumer, the lawyer, the law firm to really get an understanding on, which is how, what metrics are you that do you track for the lawyer or the law firm? And can that lawyer or law firm also like, you know, I'm going to go on my website and see how many views. I didn't even know yeah. that Did yeah. that happen. Is that easy or do, do I need to be like a, a tech junkie or whatever? No, no, no. no. So, so we track everything from impressions to clicks, to visits, to how long they've been on the website, all those types of things. And then farther down the funnel, if you will, is phone calls and emails, right? That's, a click is never paid my mortgage, right? Yeah. A visitor has never paid my mortgage. A phone call is closer, but yeah. we track all of these KPIs all the way down to the only piece of information I don't know, even though I can hear the calls, all those types of things. I don't know who you actually sign up. Yeah. And I don't know the value of that case. So why we sit down on a monthly or quarterly basis with each of these clients is we can see all these things. And we have a dashboard to your point where they can log in and they can see every bit of information they and more yeah. <laughs> than they would ever want. But what we're where I think is important, I think what our clients would tell you is what's even more important is they don't have time to go through. If they got a hundred, we brought them 120 phone calls, they don't have time to go listen to all those. Yeah. They, right. And so we do that for them. And then we come back to them and go, okay, John Smith called you on May 2nd uh, and you talked to him for 45 minutes. Sound like a good call. Was that a sign up? Oh yeah, that was a good one. That was a $10,000 case or that was a hundred thousand dollar case or that was a seven figure, whatever it may be. And so we help them um, understand what their return on investment is because that's most important. And that takes some legwork on both our, our behalf and theirs. Yeah. Um, we try to do all the heavy lifting for them so they don't have to. But, you know, what What typically most of your listeners default to is their agency sends them some report that talks about impressions or clicks and goes, hey, we're doing a good job. And they have no idea. They have yeah. no idea. I just got an email. And anyway. It sits from, on their desk for a month until the next one comes in. And then they're like, oh, my Most, uh, I've said this before, like, most attorney marketing, when we get, when we inherit it, looks like, I don't know if you've seen the movie Christmas Vacation, where 
<laughs> Clark Griswold grabs the Christmas lights out of the box and it's a big ball of a knot and he hands it to Russ and he just goes, Hey, here's a little knot here, you know, and hands it to him and said, like, take care of that. That's typically what we inherit. And so our job is to unwind that, see which lights are twinkling and which ones aren't yeah. and figure out, okay, where do we, what do we need to eliminate? Right. What of these campaigns, where are we getting the best return on investment? Cause there should be what's typically, we want to figure out where, where do we want to be an important question that your agency should, agency should be asking is where do you want to be six months 12 months and 24 months from now yeah and and what is the plan to get there if there's no plan then they're just being reactive instead of proactive yeah and so we're we're tr we dig roll up our sleeves and get involved and figure out okay where is the what is the goal what is the target and then how do we get there because some people you know a lot of firms have a champagne taste and a beer budget and so we need to pare it down yeah they want 100 new clients this month right, right. but let's your budget will allow you to get two. So let's yeah. just make sure we're seeing a, a multiple of your investment. And then what's the next step? Okay. We got two clients in the door this month for this small investment. Let's throw a couple more bucks at it. Let's get four next month. Then let's, let's find, let's figure out a plan to get you to those hundred new clients or whatever the, the, the want need desire is. All right. So I'm going to go back in time. I mean, you know, the marketing is really picked up over the years, over the decades, and it seemed like 10 years ago, everything I was would hear would be, okay, we're going to get you on the first page of Google. We're going to get you on the first page of Google. So my, you know, when it sounds, I mean, we talked a little bit about that and you also talked about the local ads. So how important is that? Is page two really completely like valueless? And if I got 30 different marketers pitching me that I could be number one on page one, why do I think that I'm going to actually be on page one when there's thousands of other lawyers that are, you know, maybe traveling down the same path that I am? Well, uh, so a couple, a couple questions packed in there. Honestly, page two, you might as well be on page 20, yeah. right? No one goes past the first page, first off. Now, being on page two, when we get a client, if, if I could, if I could, uh, have a magic wand. I would want all our all the clients that come on board to be on page two, because it it's a a, a a shorter path to get to page one, right? Where we're trying to get to. If they're on page two hundred, then we got some time. We got a lot of work to do, you know, type of thing. But the the no one goes past page one, so it's it's page one or bust, right? Yeah. And there needs to be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of keywords if you're trying to get a good amount of business in the door. What you know. A lot of agencies will go, oh, I got you, uh, you know, page one for premise liability attorney or slip and fall at a restaurant uh, attorney, you know, or something obscure that nobody searches that way. And, you yeah. know, it needs to be um, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of keywords that you show up for on the, on page one. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, pa page one or nothing. Um, and what was your second question? I apologize. Well, really, I mean, I think that pretty much answers the, the the brunt of it, which is, you know, I my concern is, can you really deliver page one, you know, not, you know, slip and fall at the Japanese sushi restaurant or whatever. But is that, for lack of a better, you know, is that puffery or can you really deliver that? And, you know, I guess the question is, is it absolutely critical or is it just... Well, you know, if you're not on page one, we can focus on other things that'll that'll be successful as well. Well, there's okay. So there's, first of all, you need to do the the, the um, research to figure out what that is, right? Like if you're in Los Angeles, right? we're in, we're in Orange County, California. You know, we get clients go, hey, I want to I want to show up, and we have clients that show up number one for you know Los Angeles employment attorney or what you pick your term. We have a bunch of those clients, but we have clients that come to us and go. Um, Hey, I want to show up number one for DUI attorney, Los Angeles. Yeah. And it's like, okay, let's go see. We go do the due diligence to figure out what are the, look under the hood of the people who are showing up on page one. Yeah. And it gives us a really good idea of what, where that potential client is at and where they need to get to. Now, some of the way, and, and we may be 12, 24 months off from, from being able to, to accomplish that. Yeah. So how do we get at the end of the day, some of the questions is, okay, 
do you just want LA proper or can we go to Inglewood and get DUI cases for you or Santa Monica or Beverly Hills or, you know, Compton or wherever you name the Long Beach. Are there other cities where there's lower competition that we're going to see? Let's write pages of content for those cities as well. That'll the path from where you're at right now to the phone ringing with a new client on it is much shorter than trying to show up for, you know, something in LA or Atlanta or Houston or Chicago or something where it's super, super competitive, right? That may, are there some suburbs that, you know, do you care if a, if, if a client comes from Miami proper or just outside of it, or, you know, they both have the, you know, the cases are worth the same to you. So let's not fish where, you know, you know, 500 the other fish. firms are fishing. Let's go to a smaller pond to be the big fish, big, yeah. big fish in a smaller pond. All right. So pay-per-click local ads. Now, all of a sudden you're telling me that local ads effectively put you on page one. Is right away. That... Yeah. Listen, so go, go. guaranteed, go. guaranteed. Um, yes. What, but guarantee if you, you sign up for those, you're, if you, if you do a Google search, let's go Miami personal injury attorney. The lay of the land as you see it is the local service ads are first, right? Two and a half, two, two and a half years ago. Maybe it's been three years at this point, but um, Google went and, and had a new product, a new ad, and they put it at the very top yeah. and pushed everything else down, right? So local service ads will always show up at the top. How you become one of those two that are showing is based on three things, your location, Meaning if I'm outside your office and I search for a personal injury attorney, you should show up if everything else being equal over the guy that's, that's has his office in Orlando, yeah. let's say, right. Or across town. Um, the second thing is reviews, right. Um, whoever has the most and best reviews uh, typically is going to show up higher. There's exceptions to that because they want to see frequency and new reviews coming on a consistent basis. And then the third thing is budget, right. Um, obviously, budget makes sense, right? Whoever has the bigger budget uh, has a tendency to show up higher. It's not the only thing, but those three things are the main three things that are important. So going back to reviews, we're talking about Google reviews. Correct. On uh, your Google My Business page, meaning um, when if you've claimed your Google My Business page and you Google your firm, if you're looking on a desktop, the right-hand side, it'll show some pictures and <clears throat> your address and your phone number and your reviews. That's where you want the reviews to go. All right. Let's talk a little bit, a bit about pay-per-click. Who should be calling you up to do pay-per-click campaigns? So let's go back to the LSAs really quick. It's yeah. important to know. The great thing about law, I think, in my opinion, um, even for the risk averse, right? I recently had a PI, personal injury attorney tell me he's risk averse, which was sound like jumbo shrimp or something, right? An oxymoron. <laughs> but but the point being is is um, the cool thing about local service ads is you only pay when the phone rings, right? Um, I don't care if you put a, a million dollar budget out there. If your phone doesn't ring, you don't pay any money. Yeah. You only pay per call. It's a pay per call program. And on top of that, if calls come in, if you're going after just car accidents and a premise liability or a med mal call comes in, you can dispute that call and get your money back. Yeah. Or if you're only focusing on Miami and a call comes in from Jacksonville, you can you can dispute that and get your money back. If it's a, a current client or a salesperson or a bot or any of those any of that garbage, it's it, it it's really helpful. It puts some kind of bumper rails on your marketing budget to where you're only paying. It doesn't mean that, you know, someone calls up, you do DUIs and they don't have the money to pay you. You're still going to pay for that lead. But any of that other garbage, um, Google will refund your money, right? Pay-per-click now. So that I think everybody who is trying to get new clients in the door should at least have a line in the water with local service ads. And the value add that we bring is we listen to every phone call. So the, the attorney doesn't need to spend time listening to the calls and, and, and putting in the disputes to get that money back. So we take that off their desk. Now, pay-per-click. We're pay-per-click pay is awesome. Um, you can spend too little bit of money with pay-per-click. Like out here in LA for car accidents, it's five, 350 to $500 per click. Yeah. 
we get calls probably weekly and they go, Hey Travis, I got 10 grand a month or five grand a month to spend. I want to go after car accidents in Los Angeles. I tell them, um, take your wife out to dinner or go put it, go to Vegas and put on red or black. You'll have a better return yeah. on your money because at $500 a click, if you have $5,000, you're only getting 10 clicks. Yeah. And, and, and there's, there's a, there's, it's a math equation. Paper clicks, a math equation. If you're getting 10 clicks, if someone's managing it, well, if you're getting, let's say 20% of those folks that clicked on your ad to call you, that that's a good campaign. Yeah. But if you're only getting 10 clicks, that's only two phone calls. Yeah. Are you, I'm I'm betting that you're answering the phone, right? Yeah. I'm betting that hopefully it's it's not their fault. Hopefully there's injury, right? If you're a PI attorney, you're hoping that. Um, so if I if I'm um, with that little bit of budget, it's kind of like a deck of cards. I tell people, right? If you're only, if you have too small a budget, and let's say the cases are the aces, right? And you have a deck of cards, and you you know five grand is like buying three cards off the top of the deck and hoping it's an ace. I don't like that. I, if I were a betting man, which I am, I don't like those odds, right? So people need to have a big enough budget to do that. Um, secondly, is pay per click is really really good. Um, for niche areas, niche type of, uh, of cause you can't get as granular with local service ads cause there's only so many practice areas. So like we have a client that does, uh, um, uh, ABC law, alcohol, beverage control, they kill it yeah. and they, cause there's no, there's not that category or Spanish, right. Yeah. Or, or if there's a particular type of PI case, that's not in that category, um, it, it, they don't have a category for local service ads. Those, those areas are, are awesome for pay-per-click because you can get very, very granular. You can focus on very particular keywords, um, but you just need to make sure you're spending enough money. And that's where you hear a lot of people, oh, I tried pay-per-click because <clears throat> some agency will take any budget and don't do the due diligence to figure out what's the big enough budget that to, 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 to bring on a successful campaign. All right. Is there any other type of marketing that your firm does that we haven't gone over? Uh, we do social media. Certainly, uh, that's great for branding. And if you're focusing on a certain demographic and you can run ads, that's great as well. Uh, but yeah, those are those are the four, four buckets, if you will, that that where you want to start if you're, uh, you know, you want to focus on if you're an attorney, certainly. All right. So I'm listening to this program. I'm sold. How do I get? What's the easiest way for me to get in touch with you? Am I yeah. trying to you or am I trying to talk to somebody else? Yeah, we, we we have a whole team of sales folks, but me or any of them, you can come to our website, riseupmedia.com. Rise is spelled with a Z, R-I-Z-E-U-P-M-E-D-I-A. Or you can email me directly, Travis at riseupmedia.com. I'm the CEO of the company, so we certainly can um, take care of you. And and uh, we'll, even if you just have questions or want to know what what your options are, give us a shout and we, we'll do free consultations and, and see what, what you're up against in your market. All right. Listen, Travis Hecklin from Rise Up Media. Five years you've been doing this, banging it out for a bunch of clients. Thanks for coming on to the show and talking. I hope that this will help some of the other law lawyers and law firms that are maybe on the fence or, you know, you did marketing print and it didn't work and it got, I just want to move on to somebody else. Here's, here's your guy, Travis Hecklin. All right. So take care of yourself, Travis. And uh, that'll do it for this episode of Cut to the Chase. Subscribe, rate, and review, share. All is appreciated. Travis, you have a good day, all right? Thank you. That's all for this episode of Cut to the Chase. But before you go, will you open up your podcast app and give us a five-star review? You can also leave a comment about what you liked most or other topics you'd like us to cover. And please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming shows. Thanks, everybody. Be safe out there.